Elsewhere on the NFL scoreboard in Dallas, it's the Rams that have grabbed the early lead. Sammy Watkins, two touchdown catches now in that first half of play. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Now come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Well, last year, I'm not sure we saw very many of those runs, did we, from the Vikings? I mean, they had the poorest rushing attack in the league. Just 75 yards per game, but carries like the one we just saw. That'll help bolster that average. Yeah, certainly, and they tried to beef up the offensive line in the offseason, brought in Latavius Murray, and then drafted Dalvin Cook out of Florida State. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Winston now from the 50. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him onto the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Handoff comes to Peterson. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. Not an ideal spot to be on first down, but I love that the play caller did not immediately abandon the running game and say, okay, we've got to throw it in order to pick it up. Stayed with the run, was rewarded with a big-time pickup. Now they're in second and manageable. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle. Keep coming after them. Put the pressure on them. And the play clock's running down. They try again with Peterson. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves. And this is going to be intercepted. Darius Slay with a pick. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. So we get a look at the Lions offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. We have not seen much on offense from either side. These last few drives, it has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on offense trying to get things figured out, Okay, we self-scout every week in our game plan. How many things do we do in certain times? What are our tendencies? 
time to go to some of those tendency breakers and try and create some offense. Well, they always have those in their back pocket, don't they? You have to. And if you don't keep abreast of what you're doing, you lock into a rhythm and make it easy for the opposition. Looking for tendency breakers right now. And he'll give it here to his running back. And yeah, not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Throwing on third down. Stafford. And he fires one that's intercepted. Xavier Rhodes with a pick. Brandon, these quarterbacks have their hands full all afternoon long, but they finally get a measure of revenge as he gets himself in a nice spot. He's able to get two hands on the football and pick it off. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again, and the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play -play guy a question. <laughs> hey, you're my partner. I know you're right there with me. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Play clock winding down. They run again on first down, Peterson. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Only a yard that time, second and goal. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Touchdown, Adrian Peterson with his second touchdown of the game and fifth on the year. And the Vikings capitalize on the short field as they take it in for six. Well, he wasn't the guy they were initially going for, but after going through the progressions, it worked. When you have plenty of people who can catch the football, you don't always have to go to your primary target, and sometimes that target is actually covered. Nice job coming off of that and getting it to someone who was open. And a man out of the backfield gets in for the score. And he's able to put it through. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it's polished off by a Viking score. Four bath out to kick this one away. This is taken at the three. <laughs> and Detroit getting set to go now. We have seen a lot of points here in this quarter. For us up here in the booth, it's been fun to watch. The defensive coordinators probably scratching their heads. Yeah, they're going a little bit crazy right now. But let's face it, all of our friends who play fantasy, <laughs> they're enjoying the heck out of this show because most of them are creating and getting a bunch of points. Yeah, points certainly not at a premium here. And his throw is incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Right. 
Going to give this time to the tailback. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. But at least he was able to break that initial contact, or it could have been a loss. Yeah, give credit to the defensive player, though. What did he do? Made him slow down, slow up his feet, and allowed the rest of the guys to get there to finish him off. To throw on third down. Stafford, now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Five yards on the screen, but that'll take us to fourth down. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. Around the NFL, third quarter at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, and it's the Falcons who are leading in that one. Matt Ryan with one touchdown pass thus far. Here's Sam Martin now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Cheryl's to return it. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. And our focus now moves to Adrian Peterson. He's had a good third quarter. He likes whatever adjustments were made at halftime, whether those were team adjustments or just him talking to himself. And whatever that conversation was, it was pretty good because he is running really well here in the third quarter. But I like to think it is a team adjustment. Offensive line, those big S. And he's taken down. Back at his own seven. Hey, Sean Robinson in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number, and we can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. Another toe for the workhorse here this afternoon. Peterson. Yeah, nothing doing here is this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. The Vikings on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and 19. Jameis to throw it. They get him back at his own three-yard line. Ezekiel Ansah in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. That's his second sack of the game. The best defensive ends, they do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive linemen across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. Here's Ryan Quigley now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. So a short drop, but he's able to get it out, and this is a good kick. And this one will wind up being down just outside of that 20-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Now they try the right side here. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Now a handoff as they run left side. They give them 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? 
has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. They'll try the air now with Stafford. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. The Lions on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and ten. Here's Stafford. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Sharif Floyd able to get him down for a loss of 11 on the play, and it'll be fourth down. They were trying to set up that screen, trying to get that screen to formulate. Took too long. Ends up taking a sack, and that leads you to a couple of other questions. Number one, why don't you just get rid of the football near the screen, guys, so that you don't take an interception? But really, the big one, they just took everything away, and he was really kind of flummoxed on that play and ended up taking the sack. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. Clock showing 90 seconds to go in the third. They start the drive with Peterson. And he's taken down, but able to get this up to the 20-yard line. They were looking for a cushion from that end zone. He gave it to him, 15 big yards. That run is what defenses don't like about dealing with Adrian Peterson. His ability to drop a shoulder and run through contact. And he's amazing at keeping those strong legs going, isn't he? For him, no run is ever truly over. I mean, he's actually not even convinced that when they blow the whistle, he's actually down. That's how he finishes runs in a big way. So the offense has it first and 10. Ready. Off the play fake, Winston. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. one across the 45 before he's brought down. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at beautiful new U.S. Bank Stadium. It's the Vikings in possession of the football and the lead. They'll be looking to add to that total as we begin quarter number four. Play fake, Winston. Got a man over the middle, and it's 
incomplete. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A really nice gain of 25 yards. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They'll run it now out of the gun. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. It's a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. one incomplete. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph. And that'll make it third down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. On third down, Winston. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. to add the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So that drives seven plays in length. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Forbath out to kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. Shoves him aside. And he'll take this across the 25. Couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? <laughs> so you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Oh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, if something got, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. 12 yards there as they move the chains. They need a touchdown, the two-point conversion, and a field goal. Pretty good start to the drive, though. Yeah, good start to the drive, but the urgency has to really be increased by both the players on the field and everyone on the sidelines. Got to make sure everyone is up and into this game. On first and ten, Stafford. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. down at Stafford. And he just gets rid of it. Throws it away. The wise move there looked like nobody open. Now second down. What's the old adage? Be quick but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be getting rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Back to the air. Stafford on second down. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Jones. 
And he's brought down. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this when he's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone say, oh, a hit. He lost the football. Stafford puts it on the ground. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Throwing again at Stafford. Able to fight through one tackle. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. Got to give some credit there defensively. They snuffed out that screen early on first down. Really read it well, didn't they? Because they didn't bring the pressure that they expected. They covered all the passing lanes. So once you see a breakdown as the passer, I think in this situation, you're throwing it at the feet of your back to make sure no one picks it off, or you throw it away, throw it over the sideline. Don't try and freelance and try and make a bigger play. There's really no one else running a pattern that should be open. No gain on that run, and while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style. And he's going to be hit and taken down. Back right around the 48-yard line. Emmanuel Lamar with a big-time sack on third down, and it'll be a loss of seven. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. Here's Sam Martin now. He's been terrific so far. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. Around the NFL, fourth quarter right now in Atlanta. And it's the Bills who are leading in that one. Sharkandrick West closing in on 100 yards on the ground. He's at 98. And out now come the Vikings. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing. And the Lions pressure too strong. Down he goes. And Dominican Sue in there to get him. And that's sack number six for him on the year. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Time running out here on the play clock. Carry number 20 now for Peterson. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. 13 yards on the pickup, and they're going to face a third down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try to lead it out. Third down, it's Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson, he's at the 40, 20, 10, touchdown, Vikings. Adrian Peterson with touchdown number three in the game and six on the year. And the Vikings are going to add on to their lead. Well, three scores in this game. I think that deserves some type of a broad gesture. I know in hockey, that's called a hat trick and people throw their hats out on the ice. What about us? What can we do for this guy? Well, if I'm his teammates, I'm buying him a little steak dinner tonight, right? At least a skirt steak, probably a filet. Oh, you're going big. I like that. Yeah, I mean, skirt is I minimum. Mean, skirt filet steak, at maximum. On. You can't give the guy a skirt steak his first three times. Filet. Yeah. Ten Por ounce. Porter Sixteen ounce. Porterhouse. Fine. Now four bath for the extra point. 
And the lead is up to 18 now. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And it's capped off by a touchdown run by Adrian Peterson. Four bath out to kick this one away. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So here come the Lions now. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Going left side here, and it's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? On first and ten, Stafford. Oh, a hit. He lost the football. Stafford puts it on the ground. Does the big boy have the juice? Touchdown, Minnesota. The offenses have success. You can say they've run wild a little bit. Time for the defenses to get into the act, and one does here. Nothing like a little bit of revenge for the defense. They've had to deal with it all game long. Both offenses going up and down the field. How about it when they take the ball away and take it to the other end zone? Forbath to add the extra point. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This is taken at his four. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. And they weren't on the sidelines for long, but I'll tell you what, I'm glad you and I weren't down there. We could hear them, <laughs> the coaches from all the way up here. They were adamant, you've got to hold on to the football or else we have no hope. Yeah, it's easy for me to laugh sitting up here, but you're exactly right. If we were down there, that message would have been received a whole different way. Because turnovers, they've been a big problem for them. Got to take care of the football. Got to hold on to it. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. And there's Golden Tate doing exactly what he does well. Extra yards after the catch. Exactly. To your point, among wide receivers, no one had more yards after the catch than Tate last year, 635. Field. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. They've gone to the fourth quarter now in Dallas, and that lead there for the Rams has extended. They just scored again. A win would be their second on the young season. From the 50, Stafford. Ebron with it over the middle. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. Face mask. Defense. 
So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march up another 15 against your squad. down Stafford here he couldn't quite hold it got hit ball pops out incomplete that's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football really really well done decent offense just better defense I think you're right Second and 10, Stafford again. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. Emerson Griffin in there with pressure yet again. And that's the seventh time they've dropped him here this afternoon. Offensively, they're going to have to figure this out before next week. Seven sacks in one game. Yeah, that's more than any quarterback should have to bear. And if this continues on, there will be another quarterback in the game because no one can stand up to this week after week. After the sack, Stafford and the Lions come up on a third and long situation. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And a pressure gets to him again. Emerson Griffin in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here is Matt Prater now. He's got the leg for this as he holds the NFL record with a 64-yarder back in 2013. They're spotted at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And this is good from 57 yards out. That was bombs away right there. Well, in the grand scheme of things, it's likely not going to matter much, but at least they get themselves three points closer to respectability. And I don't know that they're going to feel a whole lot better about things because they've clearly been outplayed all game long. But hey, no reason not to take the points when the opportunity presents itself. And the Vikings able to recover. The hands team does its job. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And... I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. Just a couple on the ground there, and that's going to bring up third and about six. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. And the play clock's running down on third down. That's Peterson, and he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. They give it to Peterson. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. A gain of three, second down. 
Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action. Hit them over the top. On second down, Peterson. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. It's a gain of four there, and it gives them a new set of downs. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settling because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. And I know the defensive guys poking, clawing, breaking, trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone. Yeah, like you alluded to, especially this part of the field. For us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew, I'm Brandon Gauden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. It's a win for the Vikings as we say so long from Minneapolis.